Hello and welcome to this lecture titled Maps, 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 The Basics of Cartography. My name is Leon Sultan. I'm an AP Human Geography teacher at Abraham Lincoln High School in San Francisco. We're going to start with projections. So when we look at these two maps, what are the major differences that we can observe? Why do they look so different? We have map A on the top left and map B on the bottom right. and These are both very common projections. So when we look closely at map A, we're seeing that it really looks like the continents look elongated and maybe this isn't the natural size and shape that we're used to. We also look in the top of the map and we can see that uh, Greenland looks very small um, as compared to this map where the continents, um, they appear to be a, a shape that we're a little more familiar with. The sizes, however, um, of certain land masses are very, very disproportionate. So for example, Greenland, when we look at it to the north of North America, is huge. It's about the same size as the continent of Africa. And if we look at this map, we can see Greenland is actually very small uh, as represented on this map. So why are these maps so different? Well, the reason that they're different is because they're both projections, and they're different projections of a round object, the Earth, onto a flat surface, something 3D has become 2D. And so therefore, they're both different projections and they're both distortions. So why are there so many different looking world maps? Well, the reason is because what we're doing when we create a map of the world is we're taking a 3D object and we are putting it onto a 2D surface and that process is called a map projection. These are the lecture notes. Um, they were passed out in class and there is a PDF posted on the Google Classroom. So a map projection. A map projection is a method of representing the surface of a sphere on, or other three-dimensional body onto a flat plane. The reason why maps of the Earth are never 100% accurate is because when a round object is made flat, something necessarily has to become distorted. There are three major types of projections, as we can see in this graphic here. And we can see that it's an actual projection where we shine light uh, how this used to be done is shining light from the inside of the globe and projecting the image onto a flat surface. So for example, with a planar projection, the flat surface is just a plane. So the globe is the image from the globe is projected onto a flat plane. And these are generally for maps of the poles. Uh, here we see an image of a cone, and that's a conical projection. So we put a cone around the globe, project onto it, and then flatten it out for our conical projection. And then here's a cylindrical projection where we put form a cylinder around the globe, project onto it, and then lay it flat. The name of the projection is the shape that the image is projected onto. So cylindrical, conical, and there's another name for conical, is also azimuthal, and then planar, which is just a flat surface like a piece of paper. The uses and examples. So the most typical cylindrical map that we know of is called the Mercator projection. It's a very, very famous map. For conical or azimuthal maps, very common for reference maps, like the, the map of a country is usually going to be a conical map. It's highly distorted when you do the whole Earth, but it's very accurate when you do just one country. Planar maps are generally only used for maps of the poles. The Mercator projection is uh, pictured here on the right. It's one of the most important um, map projections uh, in history, and it's used very often. The size and the shape of land is very distorted near the poles, and it, again, we can see how Greenland appears to be about the size of Africa, and that's completely incorrect. The area near the equator is the least distorted area, so the area near the equator is quite accurate, where the area around the poles is very distorted. The reason why this map is important is because direction is true anywhere. When you draw a line on this map, it's going to be an accurate uh, compass bearing if you follow that line. So it can be used, this map can be used for navigation. The reason this map is so important is because it's a navigational map that was used at many times throughout history when sailing on the ocean. So to review with the uh, cylindrical map, the Mercator projection, lots of distortion at the poles, and little distortion near the equator. The next important projection we're going to look at is called the Robinson projection. In the Robinson projection, the size and shape of the land is a lot better than the Mercator projection. 
So it's much more true to form in terms of size. And now we can see how Africa appears to be a much, much larger land mass than Greenland. However, with this map, direction is distorted. So it is not used in navigation at all. Uh, this map is really just made for schools. This is not a navigational chart like the Mercator projection. Okay, moving on to the next topic we're going to discuss is called coordinates. So the geographic coordinate system is a system that enables every location on the Earth to be specified by a set of numbers and or letters. The one that we're most concerned with today is called latitude and longitude. That system will show us our absolute location on the Earth. It's the most common coordinate system. These are represented as lines on a map. I'm sure you've noticed many maps have lines written on them, but which one is which? So we're going to start with latitude lines. Latitude lines are a geographic coordinate that specifies the north-south position on the Earth's surface. So since they tell you where you are north to south, the lines themselves uh, are all parallel and they all run east to west. The equator is the zero degree latitude line. So everything north of the equator is in the northern latitudes and everything south is in the southern latitudes. All the latitude lines actually get shorter and shorter as we move towards the poles. So we can see the equator is the largest latitude line and the, the latitude lines are very short as they approach the poles. So here we can see the latitude lines uh, from outer space. This is what they would look like on our world map. Now the area on the map that is in between 23 degrees north latitude and 23 degrees south latitude is the area close to the equator and this is called the tropics. This is called the tropical zone. And here we can see on a world map the red area is actually the tropics. And the tropics share a, a very um, distinct climate, a lot wetter than the rest of the world and a lot hotter than the rest of the world. We can see that's Central America, much of South America, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as Southeast Asia. Here in San Francisco, we are 37 degrees north latitude, so we're out of the tropical regions. Okay, looking at the next set of grid lines, these are called longitude lines. Longitude lines give us our relative location east to west. So longitude is a geographic coordinate that specifies the east-west position of a point on the Earth's surface. They all meet at the poles, so they are not parallel lines, but they all meet at the poles, at the north and the south pole. All longitude lines are the exact same length, okay? So they run from the north pole to the south pole. They're all the same length, and they all split the Earth exactly in two. How do you memorize which one is which, latitude versus longitude? Well, this is how I memorized it when I had to learn this in college. Where in the world does it get hotter? I know that I'm from the Northern Hemisphere, so as I go south, it gets hotter. East and west doesn't really get hot or cold per se, but I know as I move south, then it gets hotter. It gets hotter. So north to south is latitude. How do I remember that? Well, from an advertisement that I saw in college, which was uh, from Corona, it says, change your whole latitude. In other words, come down to the tropics, right? And a lot of their images that they use in their commercials are of the tropics or of tropical locations. Latitude rhymes with attitude. Going south is going to a tropical place. Latitude is north and south. Another way to memorize this that a student taught me was long. Longitude lines are very long. They're longer than latitude lines. So where's the origin of the longitude lines? What's the zero? We know that the equator is the zero for latitude lines, but for longitude lines, it's a random point on the Earth, which is Greenwich, England. Why is it Greenwich, England? Well, that's where the people who came up with the system um, originated from, and so they decided to make where they were from to be the zero degree, or the prime meridian. So there's the prime meridian, zero degrees, and everything is measured either west or east of that on the globe. So everything over here is in the west longitudes, and everything on the other side is in the east longitudes. And around the middle of the Pacific Ocean is where those two meet, and that's called the International Date Line. So how do we find our absolute location here in San Francisco? Here's our, here's our city right here, west coast. So first we measure how far north of the equator we are, and then we measure 
how far west of the prime meridian we are. And what we get is our absolute location, which is 37 degrees, uh, 44 minutes and 51 seconds north, 122 degrees, 28 minutes and 49 seconds west. So that's our absolute location here in San Francisco. All right, moving on to the next topic. Very quickly, cardinal points are used for finding absolute direction. Okay, there are four cardinal points, and I think these are things we've always learned, but we've never necessarily known that that's what they were called. So the four cardinal points are north, south, west, and east, and they're used for finding absolute direction on a map. Okay. One of the different types of maps that we're, uh, we'll be looking at this year are called topographic maps. An example of a topographic map is shown here. It's a map with a lot of little lines on it. So the big question is always, what do those lines represent? Well, those are called contour lines, and what those lines represent are different levels of elevation. Okay, So they represent topography or relative elevation of the Earth's surface. Okay, Those are called contour lines. Okay, our final topic is global positioning systems, and this is a very nice graphic of how a GPS works. So, tracking stations use radio to determine the orbit of the GPS satellites. Command center transmits orbital data, time correlations, and locations of other satellites in the GPS constellation. GPS satellites simultaneously transmit synchronized time and orbital data back to the Earth. GPS receivers compute location using the orbital data and the difference in arrival times of the signals of at least four satellites. So you have to be in contact with four satellites. There are many GPS satellites, so there's always going to be four that you'll be able to be in contact with, especially if you have a handheld GPS system like this. What is GPS? It's called the Global Positioning System, and it determines our exact location on the Earth, our absolute location, and it's determined by a contact with at least four satellites. Okay, that covers the entire lecture for today. I hope you've enjoyed and that you found it informative. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below.